In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today's liturgy is one of contrasts. We are called to make a decision between good and evil. And this tension is particularly apparent as we listen to the Gospels. The first Gospel, the Gospel of the Palms, is one in which the people enter with great joy, for they had waited millennia for the Messiah, the Christ, the one who would come and bring them, usher them into a new era, one of peace and joy. And they lived this great hope. But as we enter into the gospel known as the Passion, we see quite a different face of humanity. For in this one, we are given an overview of what is to come. And within these contrasts, the gospel writers are very clear to point out the differences between good and evil. We have on one hand crowds that proclaim, blessed be God, blessed be the Lord, blessed be he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And yet this is contrasted by those who come and proclaim that there is no God but Caesar. We see followers who shout out, Hosanna, Hosanna. And then the Pharisees, who advised Jesus to rebuke his disciples so that the praise will be stifled. There are others who continue their shout out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. While at the same time, those who proclaim, crucify him, crucify him. There are the women who weep. And there are the soldiers who mock. Those who blindfold Jesus and say, if you are really the Christ, prophesy, prophesy. There is a soldier who offered Jesus vinegar. And there was the centurion who looked into Jesus' eyes and said, surely this man is innocent. We have two thieves. One chided Jesus, if you be Christ, save yourself and us. And the other who looked into Jesus and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And as we look at this dichotomy, as we look at this contrast between the darkness and the light, between that which is sinful and hateful and that which is good and life-giving, we're shocked and horrified and stunned at how low a human can descend. And the gospel is calling us today, make a decision. Each and every one of you look into your hearts and decide. Will you be my disciple? Or will you betray me? Will you be my disciple? Or will you be my executioner? It seems to be a nice and clean-cut decision. Who among us who came today would say, oh, I want to be amongst those who would betray Jesus. I will shout to the heavens, crucify him. I reckon not a one. That we listen to this gospel and we listen to this command 
We ponder the question, but not even for a nanosecond. We know that we will stand behind Jesus. We will be with him through thick and thin, into prison and even unto death. It is an easy decision. We come as the worshiping community to love and to cherish both God and one another. But you know, the gospel never gives us a real clean cut, unambiguous question and answer. This gospel message turns the story upside down. Let's look at two other contrasts. Pilate, a Roman prefect, the one who held in his power the decision to condemn Jesus to death, death on a cross, or to release him said to the people around him three times, he is innocent. He is innocent. He is innocent. And then there's Peter, the rock, the disciple who followed Jesus, who said to Jesus, I'll be with you always, even to the end of time. And Peter denied Jesus three times. I think it is with this final contrast that we're called to be honest with ourselves. Because this last contrast convicts each and every one of us. We are all capable of doing which is just and good and blessed to do that which makes the heart of Christ pleased, that honors creation and serves one another. And at the same time, let's face it, we can be just plain knuckleheads. We can turn away from Jesus and do the things, either by commission or omission, things that grieve Christ's heart. But of course, that's not the end of the story. And there were two prayers which Jesus prayed from the cross that help bring this dichotomy into play, that bring it to resolution. The first was Jesus praying, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. In pain and agony, Jesus did what he came to do. To save us. To make us whole. To reconcile us. And we are reassured that no matter what happens, we are a people forgiven. And we can let those burdens, large and small, go. We are forgiven. We are loved. And of course, implicit in this message is not only that we stand forgiven, but that we are also charged to forgive others. And that is non-negotiable. No matter, large or small, how we feel wronged, how we are hurt, we are called to forgive as we are forgiven. The second prayer from the cross was when Jesus breathed his last breath, when he gave up the ghost. He said, into my hands I commend my spirit. And the second part of that very well-known psalm that wasn't included in the gospel reading this morning says, for you have redeemed me. And we see the faithfulness of Christ, the faithfulness and obedience that he had 
to his father's mission. This great plan of salvation that Jesus came and lived and died with a faithfulness to God. And having heard this, we are given great hope that no matter what happens to us, we are not only forgiven, but we are redeemed. We are redeemed and loved. The Passion Gospel ends in a bit of a cliffhanger this morning. It ends with the women who would follow Jesus through thick and thin, laying eyes on Jesus and the sepulcher, and then going off to make readiness to prepare to receive the body of Christ. And you and I are called likewise to leave this place and make ourselves and our souls and our hearts, our minds and our spirits, ready to receive Christ. You see, we know the rest of the story. We know what those women did not yet know. Easter is not here yet, but it is coming. It is coming. It is on the horizon. And we leave with the Easter message that goodness is stronger than evil, that love overpowers hate, that light shines in the darkness, that life conquers death, and that victory is ours through God, who loves us, forgives us, and redeems us. Amen.